Last time, we spoke about what it means to give to God in tithes and offerings. And as you know, our Lord said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to the Lord, give to God what is God's. We looked at what it means to give to God, and today I would like to look at what it means to give to Caesar. In Romans chapter 13, Apostle Paul makes it very clear. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against God, and God has instituted, and those who do will bring judgment on themselves. For the rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear? Then don't go against the authority. Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For the rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They're God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment to wrongdoers. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because of possible punish, punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why we pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants, who give their full time for, to governing, Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If you owe revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. It's very clear here. What Bible teaches is government's authorities are God-made. God, God puts the governments together. All authority comes from God. All governments come from God. You might say to yourself, how about bad governments? Not every government is a good government. Right, but we'll deal with that later. As believers, we have to understand this. Government is made by God. Authority is made by God. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2 says, obey all human authority. So he's including your boss, your school, your teacher. Basically, the picture that God creates for us, a believer must live a life of obedience to the law. We shouldn't be rebelling and fighting and breaking the law. Why? One, that's what God said. God said, obey. God said, obey the government. By living an orderly life, by living a life of submission to the government, we are living a life that's pleasing to God. Because it is the Lord that put that government together. Believe it or not, the president we have and the governments we will have and we had in the past is all within God's plan and provision. Sometimes it's very difficult to believe. Looking at world history, governments, leaders like Hitler, Lenin, how can they possibly, what happened to the Armenians in, in 1915? How is that from God, right? But in a way, they all fit into God's sovereignty and the way he ordains life. What he tells us is to obey the law. Don't break the law. If it says pay your taxes, pay your taxes. This is very important. Especially those of us that are not born in America. We are used to not paying taxes. We think it's something extra that we get to do. No. We obey the law. If you're in school, you play by the rules. You, you respect your teachers. You, you follow the rules. If you're at work, you, 
You follow your uh, boss, your leaders, whatever you're told, you do. Government, whatever the law is, no matter how overbearing and cumbersome it might be at times, we obey it. Why? By obeying the law, we bring honor to God. Because we're saying we're God's image bearers, right? And we're, we're carrying God's, uh, Jesus' name, and we're, so we're called His ambassadors. And when people look at us, they should see Jesus. And if we're constantly rebelling and cutting corners and trying to get away with stuff, what kind of a witness is that? And the second point is, if we obey the law, we will be free. You won't be afraid. You won't be constantly looking around, am I going to get caught? And is the IRS going to come after me? Or is, are they going to realize what I'm doing? Is my professor going to find out that I cheated? And all that stuff. You can walk in freedom and assurance. And that's the kind of life God wants us to live. And freedom and assurance. And, and certainty. Same Apostle Peter that said, submit yourselves to the authorities, did just the opposite of what he said in the book of Acts. In uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 18, something is happening. Peter and John they were preaching about Jesus. They were teaching. They were preaching. And the uh, temple authorities came, which is the governing body of that region at that time in Israel, along with the Romans, and said, they, they took them in, they arrested them, they beat them up, they punished them, and they brought them in front of the council and said, you will not teach in this name anymore. Now, we said, Bible teaches, you must obey, submit to the authorities, the government. Here is the government telling them not to teach in the name of Jesus. What are we to do? What would you do? Leave the country. Leave the country? Go to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? Look what Peter, who said, obey every, uh, every authority that's over you, look what he did. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eye, to listen to you or to listen to God? You be the judge. And they went against the authorities. So what's the point here? As believers, we live a life of obedience. Obedience to God, obedience to the authorities, obedience to the laws. Right? But there comes a point, if that authority is telling you or asking you to go contrary against God, that's where you draw the line. For instance, I gave the example of uh, 1915, when, the, when people were told, kill these Armenians and take their home and property. And they did it. They weren't ordered per se, but they were allowed. Does that mean they should have done it? No. There comes a point where you must Go against what is coming down from authorities if it contradicts and or goes against God's word. In China they have a law. They say you cannot have more than one child. If you do, there's punishment. Authority says one child. And if, if a woman is pregnant, they abort the baby. They kill the baby. 
Should they do that because the authority is saying it? No. And uh, two weeks ago, the Supreme Court passed a law saying that homosexual marriage, gay marriage, is now legal in the United States. Maybe you guys heard the headlines and maybe you guys saw some of the issues. For instance, there are bakers that were run out of business because they refused to bake a cake for a, a gay wedding or to provide the flowers for a gay ceremony. They said, well, this is against our belief. But in return, they were punished. They were drawn out of business, many of them. And we are at the verge of something that is scary, in a way. Because pretty soon, I will not be able to stand here and tell you, murder, anger uh, is sin. Adultery is sin. People not, will not have a problem with that. But as soon as I say homosexuality is a sin, I can be arrested for hate crime, hate speech. If two men or two women come here, they say, we want to be, get, we want to be married in this church. And when we say, no, it's against God's word, they could close us down. We are not there yet. But young people, you are going in it, you're growing up in a world where this is going to be the norm. You are bombarded with all kinds of ungodly teachings from TV, from your schools, from the internet, from your friends. They will defend ungodliness in so many ways. They will show, they will try to show you from the Bible how what's being taught in the churches are wrong. The older generation, they got their facts pretty well together. But the young generation, you guys are in a time, in a place where you need to really stay strong in your faith. And for you to do that, you need to know who you are in Christ and what God wants from you. It's very important. It's not a coincidence that you guys are at this age hearing these words. God has plans for you guys. But you must use it in your generation for His glory. And for you to be used by Him, you must be strong in His word and know the truth. Because you're going to live in a day where you're going to be bombarded. And there might even be a time where the church would have to go underground even. Because of persecution. So I encourage you guys to be strong in your faith. Get closer to God by reading, by prayer, by attending a, a Bible teaching church. And just talking to the people that are older than you in the faith. Ask them your questions. Grow in them. And know the answers to all these questions that you will be bombarded with. Stay strong in your faith. Keep growing in your faith. Because if you're not strong, the outside influences that's happening, that we can see very clearly today, is going to gobble you up. The Bible says, your, uh, your enemy is waiting right outside the door. To eat you up. He's just looking for a reason. To make you ineffective. Make you unusable by God. Don't allow that to happen. It's not a coincidence I'm telling you guys again. That you guys are hearing these words today at an early age. God has plans for you guys. You must represent him. In your generation. Having said that, our concluding point is this. That 
as far as it's, as long as it's not against God's clear teaching of Scripture, as long as it's not clearly against God, we must obey the law, the authorities, the government. We should be blameless as far as the law is concerned, whether it's taxes, whether it's fees, or whatever it is. Try not to even get a speeding ticket, okay? Live by the law. Live in peace. Don't try to cut corners. By doing so, we will be honoring God in our lives. And when people see our witness, hopefully, Peter says, on the day of visitation, they will, they will glorify God. But if there comes a point where the law is asking you to go against God, you must refuse it, whatever the cost. Because there's a higher authority we must answer to. Amen? God bless you.